I don't know if you remember or not, that article came out talking about the fact that, uh, you know, how Bitcoin uh, matches, I don't remember the exact number, 74% of the time. Uh, it was, no, I'm sorry, it was 74 of the last 90 days. Every time the market went up, Bitcoin went up. Every time the market went down, Bitcoin went down. I don't know if you remember this or not. It's an article that came out probably, you know, nine months ago, eight months ago, even around the time that we sat down together. It tracked the correlation yeah, between correlation Bitcoin and the stock. Very, very close yeah, very to each other, right? But now Dow went all the way down to 28, okay? S&P went down to, I want to say, 3,300. I don't know the exact number. I want to say 33-something, maybe even 3,280, give or take. And then Dow's up right now. How much is Dow? Can you look at what S&P 500 is at right now? I don't know what the yeah, exact the number is. Yeah, the Dow's at 33.9 by the end of the day. I want to say S&P is 4,080, 4,020. S&P is now 3, 39.91. Okay, perfect. So what was, if you look at the rolling 12 lowest was what? 52-week low, 34.91. Okay, so 34.91. But if you look at Bitcoin, go on Bitcoin at the same time, and let's look at what Bitcoin's at. Uh, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is currently at sixteen nine. Okay, but if you go high, high is what rolling for the year? I want to say fifty. Rolling twelve. Go one year. Go one year. 52. One year. One year. Right there. No, that's one month. Go to one year. One year is at what fifty something. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go all the way at the top, go all the way at the top, fifty something. So. Um, gold, they would say, if you print money. Gold will go up. Inflation goes up. Gold will go up, right? Bitcoin was matching the market. Now it's not matching the market. At least it was matching the market when the market was going up. Now the market went up. And if you look at this, it's flatlining and going lower and lower slightly, right? If you look at every time it comes down, boom, spike up. Every time it comes down, boom, spike up. Comes down, boom, sky, uh, spike up. Today, Draper comes out and says, by the end of next year, you know, Bitcoin's going to go up to, you know, $250,000. I think he said that earlier today. But at the same time, he was supportive of Elizabeth Holmes till the very end. So, you know, when you look at some of this stuff and you compare them with the numbers that you see, why, why isn't Bitcoin no longer responding to the market the way it was before? And now it's kind of the correlation is no longer the same. What do you think is the cause of that? I mean, Bitcoin goes through phases where it's either positively correlated to risk assets or is negatively correlated or is uncorrelated. And it all comes down to uh, the, the micro dynamics, like how are all the exchanges and all the other crypto traders, how are they behaving? And then the macro traders, how are the macro traders perceiving it? And that's continually evolving. Let me uh, let me give you one interesting stat, you know, like. On August 10th, MicroStrategy decided to get into this business. So August 10th, 2020. So if you go back to the summer of 2020, when it was it was just unclear, what are all these assets going to do? You said August 10th? August 10th. So I, I track this because this is my scorecard. Because on August 11th, we announced we bought a quarter billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. And we've been long Bitcoin ever since. If you had taken a billion dollars and you had bought bonds, like long bonds, 20-year bonds in the summer of 2020 and held them through today, you would be down 19%. 8 to 10. 19. The BOND index is minus 19%. That's what I'm saying. A billion dollars yeah. will be $810 yeah. billion. Dollars. Yeah. If you bought gold, you'd be down 13%. Okay. If you had bought the NASDAQ, you would be up 3%. It pretty much chopped. Sure. Right? If you had bought the S&P index, you would be up 19%. Not, not bad. Not bad. Sure. Not bad. If you had bought Bitcoin, you'd be up 43%. Bitcoin doubled the performance of those other assets, even as it got beat around the ears. And if you had gone into big tech and you bought Google, you'd be up 34%. Not as good as Bitcoin, but better than NASDAQ. Apple's up 30%. Microsoft is up 19, uh, about 20%. So those three are monopolies, the three most powerful tech monopolies yeah. in the world. But Netflix, down 34%. Amazon, down 42%. And Facebook slash Meta, down 54%. Mm -hmm. And that's Not why NASDAQ chopped sideways. Now, what is, the, what is the point? Well, Bitcoin is really volatile. No doubt about it. It's hair on fire. But if you and if you're going to be an investor for less than 12 months, you are just a speculator and you're a trader. And God bless you. If you go short, you make some money if you pick it right. But if you pick wrong, you get your face ripped off. And I don't know how to do that. I mean, you have to be a trader. But if your time horizon is 
four years, two years, four years, eight years beyond. And if you're buying it as a long-term store of value asset and you're just, are you disgusted with the manipulation of the fiat currency? Then you buy Bitcoin because you're angry that they keep printing more pesos and bolivars and dollars and euros. Are you disgusted that the CEO of your favorite company screwed you by making bad decisions? I won't name the company. Fill in your own. Then you're going to buy Bitcoin. There's no CEO of Bitcoin. Yeah. Are you, you know, so if you, if you want to escape that, uh, that particular risk and what you want to do is you don't want to trust a CEO, a company, a government or anybody. And if you want to buy something that you can hold for 30 years, well, I can tell you, I can't pick a single company that I would want to hold 30 years. I can't, you know, there's not a piece of land I would hold for 30 years because I don't know that the mayor wouldn't. You know, the guy that replaces the mayor next might decide to triple the property tax. And, you know, so there are a lot of things in this world that are just very risky. Bitcoin fits in a portfolio and it's performing just fine as long as you have a, a two year plus time horizon. Mm -hmm. And if you have a short time horizon, if you want to look at 12 weeks, 18 weeks, one year, Every single investment in the last 12 months looks pretty hideous. And I can probably tell you that, you know, if you lost 20% of your money, you're a fool. If you lost 40%, you feel like a bigger fool. If you lost 60%, you feel like a bigger fool. So real estate investors, securities investors, bond investors, crypto investors, Bitcoin investors, there's no winners. Mm. Order your future looks bright hat. Click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.